Thanks for staying with us. It's Daybreak on Rise News and it's time for the press preview. A first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. We can start with this day. And on the front page, to stem HIV tide, Buhari launches 62 billion naira trust fund to fight disease. Dangote pledges private sector support. Moody's forecast phased fuel subsidy removal will pose challenge to the incoming government. As on page 8, attempted coup in Guinea-Bissau sends jitters across Africa. And silver doubts Nigeria's petrol consumption figure says numbers crazy, crazy rather, opaque. And on the nation's newspaper this morning, leading with elections, upcoming elections in 2023, says Governor Wike says North can't stop South from getting PDP ticket. Uh, more on the nation's newspaper. The U.S. begins no visa, no interview for visa renewal in Nigeria. Meanwhile, Forex turnover at official window dropped from $4.44 billion to $2.18 billion. And Governor Al Rufai is speaking on how to end banditry killings in his state. That's uh, the nation's newspaper. And here's the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Clack to Atiku, Saraki, Tambua, don't run. North has ruled for 45 out of 961 years of independence. He says, I will make my intention known soon. That's Atiku speaking. Uh, other stories on the front page here. It's a very busy one. Uh, court dismisses suits on elevation of Ibadan High Chiefs. Clear way for Lupada installation. Reps ask customs to pay 390 million naira compensation to victims in Oyo Katsina. For more on this, pick a copy of Nigerian Tribune. Take a look at the Punch newspaper. Marketers labor warn as federal government pushes refineries repairs to Buhari's successor. 6.6 6 million Nigerians become MTN shareholders. Telco rates in 111.75 billion naira. President Buhari mandates Gambari Ngige Adamu to resolve Asu crisis. He was begging the lecturers. Uh, Governor Wike in that river state dodges questions on presidential ambition. He says the window is still open. Oil revenue plunges as Nigeria misses January OPEC quota. And on the Financial Times, ministers wasted £10 billion on faulty or unsustainable PPE in COVID crisis, health departments reveals the loss, and also pandemic drove unparalleled demand. Meanwhile, Amazon added 25,000 workers in the UK last year to cope with deliveries boom. And the Guardian says critics are warning that the government is not clear about how it will achieve its 12 missions to help the poorest areas. Uh, this is the eye paper. Tories put PM on notice. And the Independent, leading with Boris Johnson as the Prime Minister, warns Putin of military disaster. Meanwhile, billions for levelling up wasted by ministers. A damning report criticises spending as flagship policy unveiled. Well, let's bring in Emmanuel Bello for the press review this morning. Emmanuel, great to see you. It's midweek. And uh, this is leading with a very crucial story. Uh, to stem HIV tide, Buhari launches 62 billion naira trust fund to fight uh, the virus. And uh, Dangote pledging private sector support. Again, this is very crucial, Emmanuel. When you look at the numbers, they are staggering, especially for those in sub Saharan Af Africa, those in Africa and in Nigeria in particular. Yeah, well, it's staggering, and, uh, but uh, you're also seeing the story giving some form of hope and um, it, for, for, for those who are, you know, are concerned about uh, health issues, we should all be concerned. Uh, this is a very good move, and especially with private sector, uh, uh, you know, support, uh, supporting uh, government. So that's another import of the story, how private individuals can actually support what NACA is doing and the, the health agencies uh, to stem the tide of uh, HIV. Uh, you would think because of COVID and other uh, kind of uh, big name uh, diseases around the country, uh, that HIV is in the, in, in the back burner. But this story brings it back to the fore that yes, we still have a problem and that uh, as, uh, some, uh, some people are really concerned about it. And you see uh, the global efforts, the global push, uh, with also some local support 
and um, now you are having those, this kind of funding uh, by, uh, you know, Aliko Tangote, uh, Africa's richest man. So this is another uh, good move he's making in, in a direction that most people will just uh, leave to the government, but uh, private concerns now coming uh, to part partner with government to see what they can do uh, to solve uh, a, a, a real problem that uh, uh, we're still dealing with. Speaking of uh, partnering with the government, uh, the Punch newspaper uh, is reporting that marketers and labor are warning uh, the, as the federal government pushes refineries repairs to Buhari's successor. Uh, the Minister Silva is saying there will be no subsidy removal until the refineries are working under the next government. Um, at some point, Emmanuel, these subsidies will have to go, won't they? Yes, and we, we seem to even have a timeline to it now, I mean, or a, a, a deadline to it, which is 18 months from now. Uh, that's what government is saying. But uh, the, the minister yesterday speaking on, uh, on the network was really, really angry. And you can see the anger seeping out of his, uh, his, his body. But that anger is the one that is expressed by so many people who think that, look, subsidy, these subsidies are not, they are, like he said, he said government is not gaining from it. Uh, you know, uh, the poor are not even gaining from it. Nobody is gaining from this. But Labour will always tell you that, look, if you take out subsidy, how do you expect people to cough out uh, close to 400 naira to buy fuel and all of that but uh, those who, who don't like this subsidy who say look only very few there's a cabal that is benefiting from uh, this subsidy continuously say look uh, take it out altogether let's let's leave it out it's a continuous you know um, um, argument uh, and people also blaming this government for not having the will uh, even having, having come out with uh, the petroleum industry uh, industry, industry uh, act uh, not able to actually uh, go ahead with it uh, because remo the removal of, of subsidy uh, it's actually a serious component of that uh, of, of, of the act itself and uh, the, you know the minister was very very uh, straightforward and very uh, frank about uh, some of this situation he's saving uh, the local refineries or the, uh, the the private refineries that we're talking about will not work in a subsidy regime and that uh, the crisis of even the, our own refineries is something that uh, we have to move forward because of these issues of subsidies uh, so the, the minister does not see how we're going to get out of the uh, quagmire of uh, the crisis we're having in the oil sector and there are so many of them uh, the crisis of bunkery the fact that the pipelines are not uh, doing very well uh, we are not even meeting our quota at OPEC like a uh, story is suggested many troubles but uh, a chunk of it is the issue of subsidy itself uh, so yes that's uh, the minister are there decrying and saying that look but labor thinking differently and saying uh, look, uh, where you have to have a human face to it. 18 months down the line, we have to do away with the subsidy, and then maybe we'll come face to face with what uh, Labour seem to be talking about, which is the fact that, uh, uh, well, there will be increase in suffering and all of that. Government not agreeing, not buying that, saying that, for instance, the $3 trillion, uh, that has been budgeted for subsidy can be used for other things. Now, Emmanuel, let's move to the nation's newspaper and talk about the 2021 annual security report of the Kaduna State Government that shows some really terrifying numbers. In 2021, 1,192 people were killed, uh, over 3,000 people were kidnapped, and over 800 people injured due to banditry and other violent crimes last year. Now, the governor, Nasser El Rafai, was appealing to the federal government to create a sort of a theater command like they have in the North is to sort this uh, really, really terrible issue out. Emmanuel, it seems like the Nigerian government, um, not even only talking about Kaduna State now, is always on the reactive rather than being proactive when it comes to these insecurity issues. You're right, I mean, and that's the views of so many people, you know, that uh, it, sadly, like we keep saying, <laughs> they, they, the government is a run on the issue of security. Uh, that's, and a lot of people who voted in this president, you know, years back, actually thought, okay, well, we're going to have a better, uh, better security regime because he's a, a former general and all of that. So a lot, lot of hope around the issue. But now uh, the crisis itself when it's, 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 it's a governing almost everywhere. Of course, the Northeast governor and Northwest governors are, are worried that the crisis is gone, seem to have, you know, centered around uh, the Northwest with Erufai uh, making, saying those things. But uh, it's everywhere, whether it is uh, the crisis, you know, of bunkering in, in, in the Niger Delta uh, area or 
uh, the other sort of crisis you have in the southeast or the problems we are still having with insurgents and bandits and some form of internal kidnapping, all sort of problems. No one is safe uh, and everyone is worried. And some people even think that uh, it's, there's some form of, uh, you know, surrender on the part of, of, of government. But of course, government would always push back and say, look, we're doing enough. This problem could have been worse than this, if not because of the things we're doing. Uh, Every fire on his own, as the, the governor of Kaduna State has uh, do, tried to, you know, uh, do, he has done many things. And uh, now he's even calling for uh, some form of reinforcement from the federal government. And, uh, but uh, people have actually also allowed this effort. Uh, one time, actually, even, you know, cutting off all sorts of uh, communications in the state. All uh, in, and then, he, of course, he's, he's, he's known for saying that he will not negotiate with, <laughs> with bandits and terrorists and that he's going to be tough. And he's been doing all of that. Uh, apart from talking tough, he's been, you know, following it up a lot. Um, again, but uh, to tell you the dimension and the size of those crises, uh, the governor himself is now saying, look, I need external help, I need s s support. Uh, so I just want yes, to your point, uh, government need to, you know, and he, the, the president was told all of that uh, recently in Zamfara, that look, you have to look for better sophisticated, modern system of fighting uh, this sort of crisis. If you have to engage technology, if you have to be proactive, if you have to find ways of uh, all sort of things. Uh, so, and the, pre the presidency continues to talk about the, what they are getting, the kind of uh, armaments, uh, the kind of uh, weaponry they are getting, and their new push, their new blue, uh, uh, you know, uh, blueprint for security. Government keeps talking about that, but a whole lot of people uh, believing that. See, government has to say more, do more uh, to, to reassure the, the populace and actually, uh, you know, restore some confidences in what uh, is going, uh, the security crisis of the country. Emmanuel, just before we go, let's turn our attention to the Nigerian Tribune, which is leading with um, talks ahead of the election. It's actually uh, talking about the John National Leader, Edwin Clark, asking Northern leaders, particularly uh, Northern um, political aspirants, beg your pardon, particularly Atiku, Seraki, Tambua, not to run and leave the space open for Southern aspirants and Southern candidates to vie for the presidential 2023 election, Emmanuel. Uh, Edwin Clark is a known face, is a known voice, but would the likes of Atiku Saraki Tambua and jettison the ambition just because uh, Edwin Clark feels it's time for the Southern part of the country to have a president again? Well, it's, I'm, I'm smiling because of the way Tribune put it. Say, don't run. I mean, it's just almost like asking somebody not, uh, not to run. But there are people who say that, look, it's up to uh, people who want to run. But the case uh, the South is making is in, in many, in many uh, you know, uh, play, uh, quarters, it's actually a very a genuine one. Say, look, the North has had a run of this thing for eight years. Uh, it's the is the you know the uh, the 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 it's uh, the, the south uh, it's actually now ripe to, to to take over but again it's up to the parties and they've been we discussed this uh, last week that the parties are also actually weighing on on these issues of uh, zoning and and that it is going to make or mad their parties so um, uh, yes those calls are very stringent with even governor wiki clearly coming out and say that look nobody can be fooled again and that power must shift to the south uh, funny enough they have got some really good friends uh, in the north who are also saying the same thing the middle belt forum coming out uh, in the, uh, on monday saying that look they will not support or back any northern candidate even the acf the Iowa concerning forum is thinking that he's saying that look it's only just uh, that power is shifted uh, to the south and that it doesn't really they don't they don't care where this uh, uh, whoever is coming but that uh, yes they think that power uh, should shift so there are many people who are saying that it's just more right that after you know eight years of power in the north it should shift to the south the, the, there are those who are against zoning and saying that let it be about competencies and all that but a lot of people saying that in our kind of society you have to deliberately move power uh, to some parts of the of the of the country so that uh, they produce the president so and this is the kind of case that clark and some other strong voices in the south are making they have fans almost all over uh, the country who believe that it's only fair uh, that the south produce the next president Thank you very much indeed, Michael.